Welcome to Chuck Builds. In this video, we're setting up a quick motion lighting automation using Node Red. Before we jump in, there's a few things we need to talk about. First of all, I'm using Node Red because I prefer it. I like to see the flow. Home Assistant has some great automation tools built in and they're constantly changing and getting better. There's tons of support for their automations, but something about Node Red just clicks for me. It's what I've used for a few years and that's what I'm gonna stick with. Also, before we do this automation, you're gonna need some hardware. Previously in this series, we've already set up Zigbee to MQTT and paired some Zigbee lights. So you'll need a smart light of some kind for you to control or a smart switch. And then you'll also need a motion sensor. I like these Acara PIR motion sensors because they're very small, they're very cheap, and they're quick with a long battery life. There is a downside to PIR that it can only see you while you're moving. When you walk into a room, while you're moving around a room, if you're animated, it's gonna see you, but if you're sitting dead still, it will stop seeing you, and there's a 90 second timer by default built into these that it'll say that you're no longer there. We have a little bit of logic we can add to help with that, but if it's gonna be a problem for you in an area such as your living room where you'd be seated for a long period of time watching TV and you want the lights on, you should consider another type of motion sensor called millimeter wave and these need to be plugged into power to work but they are super duper accurate and they can really see you um, as you're stationary. They're a little bit more expensive and they're a little bit slower but the technology has come a very long way in a very short period of time and I'm sure it's not long until these get very very good. Millimeter wave sensors also have a lot of tuning that you can detect certain parts of the room, certain sizes of movement, so it'll see you and not your dog. Uh, this is an Acara FP1. There's much, much newer versions. This is just the only one I have. For this automation, though, we're going to be using Acara PIR motion sensor. These are cheap. I'll have a link to both of these on Amazon with an affiliate link in my description. If you want to save some money, you used to be able to go on AliExpress and buy them in bulk and it'd take a while to show up, but it was cheaper. I'm not sure that's still true with tariffs, but let's jump in. So we have our little sensor here. We're going to go to Zigbee to MQTT. We're going to click permit join. And then there's a little button on the side that we will press and hold until it flashes blue. And it's joining now. We'll give it a second to be fully discovered. So we can see it has been discovered. We have a picture and some description that of some motion sensor, the brand and the type. Um, what we need to consider here is the exposes tab. We are looking for occupancy. That is the entity of this device that we'll be using. And that's something that some people I see online on the forums have a hard time wrapping their head around. This motion sensor is the device. You can search by device in Home Assistant, but the entity is something that the device exposes, and that is occupancy. It also exposes the illuminance, how bright the room is. If you stick it in front of a window, it'll tell you if it gets brighter. And then um, it also exposes the link quality and battery percentage. And the main thing we need to know here is that occupancy is what we're looking for. So this Zigbee motion sensor, when we go to Node Red, we will need occupancy. It's either occupied or not occupied. And in the Node Red, it'll say on or off. And I'll show you how to check that. Another thing to consider is in the settings specific menu that you can calibrate the temperature, the illuminance, or the occupancy timeouts. The default timer here is 90 seconds. 90 seconds is fine for my uses. You probably don't wanna go much shorter than this because you might get some false positives, but if you have a situation where you want it to turn on and off very, very quickly, if you're there or not, you may wanna lower this. And I do not recommend increasing this timer at all in this space. We will do that with Logic and Node Red. That'll be easier to manage going forward. But I just wanted to call that out if there's for some reason uh, that you do need to shorten this. So let's go back to the About tab and let's rename this. And you want to rename your devices with the same pattern so that you can find it easily. I like to kind of put the description and the room in the title. I know you can add these by device and room inside of Home Assistant, but it just helps me work through it so I always know what I'm typing in and I'm not having to search for it. So I'm going to type dining room motion and then I'm going to check update home assistant entity ID and we'll click rename device. So now that's been renamed, we can come over to Node Red and we're gonna go to our lighting node. And then this is our workspace. I'm gonna stay in lighting just because this is where we're gonna be putting lighting. Later on, I'll be doing security and other smart home nodes and automations. 
And we're gonna jump into this with some best practices and that's gonna be using a comment module and that's so that we know what we're working on here. And we're gonna call this dining room motion lighting. So what's gonna happen in this automation? We're gonna have a device expose an entity called occupancy. And when it sees me, we're gonna turn on the lights. So when you have a device that the state is changing from one to another, the, the key there is states, and we're gonna to go to event state node, and the state is changed. So we're gonna call this dining room motion detected. The entity is dining room motion, and then occupancy. It gives us illuminance or occupancy. We want occupancy. And then uh, we have an if state. There's some logic here. Right now, if you clicked done, there's only one little node that comes out of it to connect. And you can add logic with a switch later on, but you can also build it in. Um, we want an if statement of if the state is on, do something, otherwise do something else. So if it is on, and then for the sake of this automation, we'll do output on connect, but you might wanna turn this off so that it doesn't output every time you uh, deploy your node. And we'll click done here. And then for the sake of testing, we'll put a debug node and connect from the if state is true, which is on top if you mouse over it, if state is true, connect to debug. We'll hit deploy and come over to the debug tab, which is right here, the little bug. And as this deploys, it says the motion is detected because it can see me and then I turn it around so it's now off and debug sees on. It only saw the on message, it doesn't see the off message right here. Uh, the off message would come out of if state is false. So we can get rid of this debug. If the motion is detected, we wanna turn the light on. So that's an action and we want to call our light. So we'll go if state is true, connect it to this action. We're gonna name it, turn on dining room lights. And then the action is like the type of action. Are you locking a door? Are you turning on a light? Are you pressing a button? So here we will do light dot turn on. And that's the lighting domain you want it to turn on. And then we'll come right here to targets. What are we turning on? We're turning on an entity and we're gonna do dining room lights. And I'm using a Zigbee group here for this one. You could put through um, color, brightness, percentage, or an effect right off the bat, but we're managing that with adaptive lighting that we did in a previous video on my channel. If you do wanna manage that, um, check out my previous videos. We kind of covered that on the last automation, or if you wanna do adaptive brightness, I have that video as well. So we'll click done here. And so when you click deploy, it's kind of like your save. You wanna get used to pressing deploy very frequently. Click deploy. When motion is detected, turn on the lights. So I'll turn this. It sees me, it turns on the lights. Now that we've turned on the lights, you probably want them to turn off when you're not there anymore. So you're gonna come down. We're gonna just click our node and click copy and then paste it. And we're gonna change this to turn off and then change it to light.turnoff as well. Click done and then we'll come through if false, turn off lights. So this very, very simple automation, if it sees motion on the sensor, it turns on the light. As long as it keeps seeing motion, the light stays on. It stops seeing motion, 90 seconds goes by, and then it sends the turn off light command. And this is not a great automation because these sensors are not that sensitive and their range of view is not perfect. So if you only have one of them in a room and you're walking around the room going back and forth and you step out for a moment and step back in, it could be turning on and off on you as long as you are not constantly being seen or if it's just outside of that 90 second built-in delay. So what we can do is add a trigger node, come down and get a trigger node, and we're just gonna drop this in the same line to the turn off the dining room lights. And I'll scoot it over to make some space so you can see what's going on. So what this trigger node does is when it receives the off message down through the flow, we can do something. So we're gonna send nothing when it receives that message and then we're gonna wait for three minutes. I like three minutes because it's 
relatively quick, but it's also relatively forgiving. If you're in an area where you need to adjust this up to five minutes or down to one minute, you can. But this is on top of that 90 second default timer that this motion sensor has. So 90 seconds after you leave the room, it says nobody's here anymore. It sends that message to this trigger and the trigger then waits for three minutes. And then we also wanna check this extend delay if a new message arrives to prevent it from a false negative or a false positive of turning off the light uh, while you're still in the room and then send whatever. It doesn't matter what it sends after that. Just that a message is going to the turn off dining room lights action. So with this automation here, and we can kind of see, I have it turned around, the light is off. We're gonna come through and we hit this little blue mark. This means it is active. It's currently waiting the three minutes and then it'll turn off the dining room lights. And this automation is getting close to what we want to do, that when you are in the room, the lights are on, you leave the room, it waits a second, and then it turns off. That waiting is very helpful that if you're walking around in front of the motion sensor and it doesn't see you for a minute and a half, it sees you again, it's going to delay that turning off the room lights. But what this doesn't cover is while this timer is going off, if it sees me again, if I turn the motion around, it doesn't cancel that trigger timer of three minutes. So it is still going to turn off the light in three minutes, even though my motion is currently seeing me. So we can do this with a change node and we'll drag this after our turning on the dining room lights. We'll connect it and we'll double click to edit and we'll say cancel off timer. We're gonna set the message payload to message.reset and we're gonna set the value to true, click done. And then we're just gonna connect this node back over to the trigger node, and then we'll click deploy. So what happens now is when motion is detected, it turns on the dining room lights. It also sends a message of reset to this trigger right here to cancel the trigger if it's currently delayed. After 90 seconds, my motion sensor will say, hey, I don't see anybody. It'll go through the second decision uh, output here. That's because of our if statement, no motions detected. It's gonna come down to the trigger and it's gonna wait for three minutes. After three minutes, if it doesn't get a reset message of, oh, I see you again, um, it'll then turn off the dining room lights. So this automation should be pretty robust that it turns on the dining room light very quickly. It stays on while you're in the room and it doesn't turn off on accident. And then once you leave the room after three minutes, it'll turn off the light. Uh, it might seem like a lot of work here to get all this figured out. And once you kind of condense it a little bit here, uh, we can deploy and we can set this up for another automation. So I'll show you how I would quickly do this for, let's do, uh, let's do bedroom motion lighting. We'll change our device to bedroom motion occupancy and we can keep the rest here instead of the dining room lights we want to do bedroom lights bedroom lights and then change your off as well click done click deploy and that's pretty quick i mean once you get one of them done you can go through and fire this off for all of your rooms it's simple and it's easy to add on to this is how i do my motion lighting automations and in a later video we'll do an away mode a guest mode we'll have some party mode so it stays on longer um, we can do all kinds of stuff around this to tune it to your needs, but just for getting started in this video, we've already spent enough time. This is a simple automation for you walk into the room, the lights turn on using Zigbee devices, and when you leave the room, it'll turn off. And this little change module and trigger node is gonna be what keeps it from giving you a false positive. Now, could you do this in Home Assistant automations? Absolutely. I just prefer Node-RED because I like being able to follow through this flow to troubleshoot. And when your automations get complicated, it's much easier for me to figure it out when I can see what is being called, when, and why. Hopefully this is helpful. If you wanna see more of this, I'll be covering all my automations on this channel, Chuck Builds. So be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.